Hey, it's Ethan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sarah Super Clamp EX hitch bike rack and how it fits on our 2022 GMC Sierra 1500. The Super Clamp is a two bike platform style bike rack capable of supporting two bikes up to 60 pounds. It's going to hold on to them both by these wheel hooks, one in the front and one in the back, as well as two additional straps, also one in the front and one in the back. So there's no frame contact. If you want to get your carbon frame bikes on here, you can. If you have a really aggressive alternative frame style bike, that'll work too. And if you do have it within that weight capacity, you could maybe even get a couple of e-bikes on here as long as they do come in under 60 pounds. So let's check it out. The first feature we'll get into is that the rack does have the ability to tilt away with the bikes loaded up. And the handle's in the front, so it's not super hard to get to. If you have a bike loaded up here, it might be a little bit trickier. But for now, we'll just tilt it. And we can pull the rack down. Gravity kind of just does the work. And this one actually tilts aggressively enough, we found, for us to get complete tailgate access. It does get really, really close though, so even though we do have the ability to get it all the way down, definitely don't sit on the tailgate. So you're definitely gonna push it into the tires or onto the rack itself. But now if you have a tonneau cover, it would be a great time to get anything out of the bed that you might need. Or if you do not have a tonneau cover, it's a great time to get back here and get a little bit further into the bed if you need to. So it's nice that it tilts and it does so aggressively enough for us to use a lot of our bed space. We'll click it up and now we can work on getting the bike removed. First thing we'll do is reach around here, press this gray button to release our first strap. There's a little bit of a gap on the other side of the strap here where the cradle sits so we can tuck that in there and get that out of the way. And we can do, we can undo the hook now if we wanted to, but I'm just gonna undo the straps first and then go back and get the first hook off of the front tire. Or from here, I can just get this one off. It doesn't really matter which one, as long as we know which one we're doing. We'll push this gray button first on this wheel hook here, and then we can press this other gray button on the top to push the entire system up and out of the way. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side, holding onto the frame of our bike now, release the hook, press the button, and move the whole thing out of the way. They don't go down all the way, which can be a little bit annoying, depending on how big your bike is. So we kind of have to work back and forth, but we can get our bike up and off. With the bike removed, we can clean some things up and get them out of the way. So we'll press that same gray button we did to get the bike off, just to fold these down and out of the way. Now we can talk about the cradles a little bit. So we do have these knobs on the front or on the top to slide the cradles up and down the tray just a little bit. This one's gonna move further because it's not in the way here. So that'll help us support a wheelbase of up to 48 inches. We can hold a maximum tire size of 4.5 inches, but you can get a fat bike adapter to get some bigger tires on there as well. Also on the front tray here, if we press this gray button, we can release the built-in cable lock. We have to hold that button down if we wanna pull it out, but that will store into a lock core that's on the middle of the tray, which in our case now is blocked by those hooks. So. It won't matter once you have the bikes loaded up because those will be up obviously, but that's where it is. From here we can get some measurements just to see how much distance we're going to be adding on to the back of our vehicle. So from the bumper to the furthest point back here, it's going to be one of these hooks. That's going to come in at about 28 and a half inches. So it doesn't stick out too terribly bad. We have a ton of room there. As far as ground clearance goes, we'll go from the ground to where that lever comes out. That's gonna be just over two feet, so just over 24 inches. It's got a nice rise in the shank, and the Sierra sits tall enough that I'm not gonna worry about that ground clearance and bottoming out going up hills or over curbs. But we do have the ability to fold this rack in towards the vehicle. Again, using that same lever we used to tilt it away. Just pull that, click it in, and I'll get a new measurement to see how much space we've saved. So now from the bumper, to the furthest point out, it's gonna be about 19 and a quarter inches. So we save a little bit of space that way. It doesn't do a whole lot to the whole system overall, but it does store in this position as well. And it doesn't cover a ton on the back of the vehicle. It sits really low. So our license plate is here in the middle. And if you're in a car, you can definitely see over this. It's not gonna be an issue as far as having it on the back. If we want to, we can use our backup camera pretty much without any obstruction at all. It sits super low, and we're gonna have tons of visibility over the top of that. Because it does sit so low, it's not gonna interfere with our taillights at all, and it's not gonna interfere with our rear window. It honestly even sits low enough that if I want to, 
I can open up the tailgate a good way, even if it's stored in this position. Again, if I have a tonneau cover and I need to get things out of the bed, I could do it from here, but I'd recommend still just tilting it away or leaving it in the down position. The rack uses an inch and a quarter shank with the two inch sleeve to fit into our two inch hitch receiver. It's held in place by a three quarter inch anti-rattle bolt, as well as the lock on the end that's gonna be key to light to that lock core for our cable locks. So it's really sturdy and secure in the hitch. Also, if you do have a car with an inch and a quarter hitch, you can use it for both, which is a nice little feature. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. So we can see here how the bike rack moves with our truck. Overall, this rack is going to be useful for you if you don't want to make any sort of frame contact, but you want to hold your bike really securely. It does that with the two wheel hooks and the two straps. It has the ability to tilt and fold. It's really compact, so it does it all in a small form factor overall. So honestly, it's a really nice rack. It's just a little bit clunky to work with sometimes, and because it has the hooks on both sides, getting it to accommodate two bikes might be a little bit tricky. So if you like this rack, you might want to check out something like the Rocky Mounts Monorail. They're very similar in price overall, but the Monorail, I think, is just a little bit easier to work with, just kind of smoother, holds the bikes more securely, or equally as securely as this rack. So if you're into this, you might want to check that out. But if you do like this rack, again, for that security and all the features that we talked about in this video, it's still a really good option. This again was just a quick look at the Sarah Super Clamp EX and how it fits on our 2022 GMC Sierra 1500.